Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for September 13th, 2021. This is the time of the week we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Katni, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, con consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. If the meeting time has changed, we'll notify you via Discord. And if you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the CircuitPythonista's Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the document to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. This meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel uh, on the Adafruit Discord server every week, so check the pinned messages to find the latest document. Uh, this meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, which is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project and a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time is too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. So with that, uh, we'll get started with community news. So first up, push the button, a handy Bluetooth button. A wonderful collaboration between maker Sovi Wong and Blitz City DIY has produced the handheld push the button box. Inside is an Adafruit Feather NRF52840 express board programmed with CircuitPython to take the button input and send commands out via Bluetooth low energy. When the box is paired with a mobile phone playing songs, you have a complete solution for controlling your tunes without having to touch the phone. Sophie designed the case and cover, and Blitz City uh, 3D printed the case in yellow, and Sophie milling one out of aluminum. CircuitPython available, CircuitPython code is available on GitHub. You can see Sophie's video on the case design and the Blitz City DIY video on the electronics design. Next up, Halloween Hackfest. Uh, join Hackaday, DigiKey, and Adafruit for a Halloween-themed contest. They want to see your crazy, creepy, ghostly, spooky, and awesome projects. Um, if your costumes are a favorite part of Halloween, why not dress up your outfit with some hacked upgrades? You could even design a ghoulish prop to add to your home's Halloween decor or a light-up jack-o'-lantern with LEDs. Uh, check out the Halloween show and tell with Hackaday Friday, October 29th at 1 p.m. to show off your awesome projects. And if you want to share them on social media, use the hashtag uh, Halloween Hackfest. Uh, Hackaday and DigiKey have partnered on this Halloween themed contest to offer three winners an online shopping spree to the DigiKey warehouse. Next up, Python language reference sheets. Aaron has crafted several reference sheets. Um, Listing, the, for, listing methods for handling data in Python. There are currently three reference sheets for Python, dictionary methods, list methods, and string methods. Uh, now a few projects. Um, wrapping up the testing of a CO2 AQI particulate monitor uses the SCD30 and PMSA003i sensors. The toughest part is figuring out how to take a decent photo of the LCD display. That is true. Controlling the Elegato key light air using the Atmega Zero ESP32S2 and CircuitPython. 
There's a video available on YouTube for that. Send love letters with feathers programmed in CircuitPython and a beautiful transmutable swan case. And that says you are seen and loved on it. And finally, converting an inexpensive white LED fixture to use colorful NeoPixels powered by an Adafruit Cutie Pie and CircuitPython. And that's by uh, Les, and there's a whole uh, Twitter thread about that. So this has been a preview of the CircuitPython, um, I'm sorry, the Python on Hardware weekly newsletter. Um, it's a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own project, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and uh, submit a pull request with the changes. You might also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that has been community news. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the project by the numbers. Um, it's a chance to see how things are going and get a sense of the health of the project um, before we get into uh, the nitty gritty of what we're all doing with it. So I'll talk about the project overall and then we will uh, split it off and talk about the core, the libraries, and Blinka separately. So overall, we had 27 pull requests merged from 17 authors, and there's a few names that I don't recognize, RJP Fifth, R. Dorsenaud, B. Jones 14, Pontus O, and Elliot G. So thank you to our new authors, and thank you, of course, to all of our uh, continued authors. And we had 12 reviewers. Uh, in terms of issues, we had 18 closed issues by nine people and 10 opened by 10 people, so we are net down overall, which is good to see. And with that, I will turn it over to Scott to talk about the core. Hello. Okay, so for the core, we had 18 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. I won't point out the new folks that Katni just did, I think. Uh, and we had seven reviewers for those 18 pull requests, so thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, Warrior of Wire looks like a new newer reviewer, so thank you to them. Uh, we have five open pull requests, where the oldest is nine days old, uh, the second oldest is eight, and then the other two are one and zero days old. So that's great. We're getting through pull requests. Um, good job, everybody. Uh, Issues-wise, we had eight closed issues by five people, six opened by six people, so we're net down two for a total of 409 open issues. Uh, really, we made a lot of really good progress in the last, last few weeks, issues-wise. Uh, we triage issues uh, by assigning milestones. We had uh, we have one issue that's not assigned a milestone that we'll have to take a look at, and we have four open issues on 7.0, which is going to be our next stable release. So that's the thing that we're trying to focus on uh, for the moment. And uh, so overall, we're really close to releasing 7.0. Uh, I, I want to talk about it in the weeds to get uh, people's feelings on where we're at with that. And uh, thanks to all the folks for for the testing. Um, really, re really appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up, I will talk about the libraries. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few other things, including our CircuitPython community bundle. Uh, so across all these repos, we had eight pull requests merged by seven different authors and six different reviewers. Um, the oldest one that we uh, merged was 105 days old, so it's good to see that we're still trying to kick through some of the older PRs, and that leaves us with 56 open pull requests. We had eight issues uh, closed by five people and four open by four people, so we are net down, uh, leaving us with 345 open issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, uh, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find um, all this information and more, including a list of open pull requests and a list of open issues. You can search the issues uh, by label. There are um, only three good first issues at the moment. We are not, we've not been great with curating that and we need to uh, step that up. Um, 
but you can also search for bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little more complicated. Um, in terms of reviewing, if you check out all our open pull requests, uh, take a look if you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, take a look for syntax, spelling, that sort of thing. Leave a comment and let us know that you did. And once you're comfortable with that, we can look at adding you to the review team. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we have no new libraries, but uh, a few uh, updated libraries that I will not read off. Overall, um, we're still seeing uh, a little bit of plugging away at older pull requests, which is excellent. Um, I want to again put out the call to folks to um, help curate the issues to pull out um, and label good first issues uh, for multiple reasons. One, obviously it's great to have good first issues for folks who are new to things and want to um, get started with it, but also because uh, with Hacktoberfest coming up, presumably, um, we automatically label all our good first issues as Hacktoberfest issues. And it would be good to have some stuff for folks to do because it seems like every year um, somebody picks most of those up. Oh, good. Scott says they did announce it. So um, yes, with Hacktoberfest coming up, it would be great if we could curate uh, some of those 345 issues. So if anybody's interested in helping out with that, please let me know. Um, and I'm hoping that that'll be something that I can get to, uh, obviously, in the next couple weeks. And that's where we're at with the libraries. So with that, I'll turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Uh, hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This uh, week we had one pull request merged by myself, and there were four, there are four open pull requests remaining. Um, there were two closed issues by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 59 open issues. And according to PyWheels downloads, uh, last month we had 9,502. And there are 76 supported boards. And Thanks. So there hasn't been much activity lately, but I finally got a little time to get around to working on some of the issues. So Great. That's where we're at. Excellent. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. And that is the state of Circuit Python, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity for us to highlight the great things that folks are doing in the community. Um, it is held as a round robin where I will start and then go through the list alphabetically. I will read off notes for folks that are not here and um, will let folks who are here read off their own. Um, so with that, I will get started. Uh, so Hug Report for Jeff, uh, simply because. Um, Hug Report for uh, Crayola for her work on getting the LED animations library working on the IS31 FL 3741. Uh, this is a little breakout board we have with a huge amount of LEDs on it. And um, it uses a particular control chip. Um, and the layout is super wonky to get that many LEDs uh in such a tiny space and so it was um it was a lot of work getting that uh getting that working and i really appreciate that happening um and finally to my dad for roasting coffee for me uh he roasted some coffee uh, special for me before they went on a trip and um i picked it up yesterday and it is absolutely delicious so uh hug report there all right and next up i have some notes for um or from Mark, who says, a hug report to Doctor for a discussion on Discord about a board idea and a group hug. And next up is MicroDev. Ah, lurking. Okay. So MicroDev has a group hug and a hug to Scott for the CI enhancement and starting work on the ESP32-S3 port. Next up, I have notes from Naradoc, who says, a hug report to Tan Newt, Foamy Guy, and Unexpected Maker for the weekly deep dive live coding hardware streams. And next up is Scott. Hello. So first off, a hug report to Katie Bell for her work, uh, continued work exploring uh, the gap between block coding and text coding. There's a YouTube link there. It's a brand new presentation from Katie for the PyCon Online 2021. So it's really great to see the progress that she's been making. 
Um, second, uh, hug report to uh, Yurish uh, for the JavaScript RP2040 simulator and getting CircuitPython working on it. I think it's going to be a tool that we should think about for CI testing and um, how how big in memory imports and stuff are. I think that'd be really cool. And last up, a uh, hug report to IGRR for joining the chat during my stream. They're from Espressif and got me the S3 dev kit and was answering questions in the chat as well. So uh, thanks for joining uh, Ivan for the during my stream when I was working on the S3. That's it for me. Thanks, Scott. Next up, I have notes from Charles who uh, has a group hug. And next up is Dan. OK. Um, Scott, thanks for doing the port-specific um, pull request build. Scott made it so that if you, we change a file only in a certain port, it will only rebuild that port when you do a pull request test build, which saves a huge amount of time. Um, we still do all the builds when the, the, the build is merged. And thanks, uh, Katni, for doing that really complicated set of learn guide templates uh, for the audio examples, which we should we'll see uh, pretty soon, I think. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Katni. Uh, this week, hugs for a uh, user on GitHub, Dura Penza, who worked on some searching and filtering capabilities for circuitpython.org that I thought were really cool. Uh, Nerodoc for some improvements inside Circup and helping me work through some of the fixes uh, that were needed due to the way that the CircuitPython org bundle is. And uh, lastly, to ask Patrick W for reviewing and leaving some feedback on uh, Cookie Cutter PR that I'm working on. Thanks. Great. All right. Next, I have some notes from Jeff, who's missing the meeting, uh, who has a group hug and to me for running the meeting today when Jeff was unexpectedly not available. And next up is Jerry. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me, um, where did my notes go? There, so uh, thanks uh, Maker Melissa for identifying and fixing the uh, BrainCraft backlight issue. Nice to have that working. And MicroDev for this quick fix to an issue that came up with the supervisor get previous trace back, trace back function, thanks. All right. And finally, we will bump back to Melissa. I just wanted to give a hug to CrossVR for helping point me in the right direction for the Raspberry Pi display issue and a group hug to everyone else. That's it. All right. Excellent. Thank you. And that wraps up hug reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity for us to sync up on what everybody has been up to. Um, take a couple of minutes, talk about what you've done in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be doing in the next week until the next meeting. Uh, it's a great opportunity to provide quick tips and tricks on uh, anybody's quick questions um, or possibly come up with uh, topics for in the weeds if we run into longer discussions. Um, this is also held as a round robin in the same way. And so with that, I will get started and then we will continue on through the list. Um, so last week, created the I2S CircuitPython Essentials template. Um, finding that the audio templates are more, as Dan mentioned, complicated than some of the others because there are uh, very specific things to each chip. And so the templates have to be kind of complicated because I need sections where you can say, you know, this is specific to the SAM D51 or this is specific to RP2040. Um, and the code uh, examples are, are lengthy because there's set up for all possible boards um, that then the example is created for the specific guide that only has the board in it that you're putting the guide for or the template into. Um, so far it's been working out. Um, I'm the only one who's dealing with them. I've been doing my best to make them so other people can use them. Um, I hope that if that ends up being the case that I've added enough instruction and so on for it to make sense, because obviously it makes sense to me, uh, which is all that matters at the moment. Um, so then I added that I2S template page to the MP3 playback on RP2040 guide uh, using Pico as the example. And uh, so that template is out um, in that guide and will eventually be added to other board guides. 
I added a note to the NeoKey Ortho Snap Apart guide about calculating the maximum key matrix size for a given microcontroller using RP2040 as an example. Thank you to Toddbot um, for that. Uh, he came up with specific for the RP2040 what the maximum key matrix size would be um, that you could handle and still have a pin left over for the um, NeoPixels. And I thought that was a interesting piece of information, so I added it to the guide. Um, I started the IS31FL3741 guide, and I updated an incorrect wiring diagram earlier today. This week, uh, I'm going to finish the IS31FL3741 guide and work on any or all of the following guides, Proximity Trinky, PAM8302, the ANO rotary encoder, or an alarm light transistor powering guide. And that's what I have going on. So next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, last week I finished uh, fixing the Raspberry Pi driver to not turn. It was not turning on the backlight on the ST7789 base displays. Um, turned out to be a pretty simple fix, actually. Uh, I fixed the kernel pinning script to work on the more recent versions of the kernel because they added like a one colon to the version number, oh, which no. kind of messed things up. Yeah, except the file names themselves didn't use that one colon, only the version check did. Anyway, uh, I fixed the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS for Blinka install. It wasn't being detected correctly. Um, I added the lib GPIOD pulse in for 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. I think that's still a, a open PR at the moment. And I looked into some issues regarding a potential spy bug, uh, but the results were inconclusive so far. This week, uh, I'm going to move over to finishing up the e-ink guides and possibly start another guide. And that's it. Excellent. Thanks, Melissa. Next up, I have some notes from Mark, who says, off for a couple weeks, so feel free to ping me if there's something worth me looking at. And left my job of 20 years last week for a new job hoping I still have lots of circuit Python time. Next up are notes from Naradoc, who says last week submitted a PR for third party bundles in circuit, advanced a generic macros lib or advancing a generic macros library running on macro pad Kibo and a generic keypad with NeoPixels with minimum configuration needed for each port and caught a cold meeting with vaccinated people has its downside. <laughs> Uh, this week, more macros library stuff. Uh, go back to libraries that should be in the community bundle, WebSockets, Whiskey Server, and add them. And then really start on the Mac keyboards layout. And uh, I'm going to do this in alphabetical order, so I'm going to go to uh, Scott next. Hello. So for me, I got the CI changes in so that only boards related to a change are built. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, mainly, I'm working on tweaking the Beely workflow uh, to add modification times and uh, moving slash renaming support. Um, should be the last uh, bits to tweak on the, on the workflow stuff for a while. Uh, PRs will get out this week for both, hopefully. Um, I was like just poking the modification one right now. Uh, I started an ESP32 S3 branch uh, that first just updates to the latest IDF. Um, and I just was chatting with Ivan. Uh, it sounds like they're going to branch 4.4 uh, really soon. So the timing should be really good. Um, we'll, we'll just update to 4.4 then. Um, and that's, that's when we'll be able to get it in. Uh, I may refactor it uh, this week, maybe on my stream on Friday, um, to enable non-ESP32 S2 builds. Um, so that would enable the S3, but potentially even like ESP and um, the C3 as well. Um, although they won't work because they don't have ESP. Um, but it should be similar to like how Sandy 51 and 21 works, where there's just kind of like some top level thing so top level macro that says whether it's SAMD 51 or 21, and it just substitutes everywhere. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, I think I will probably plan on doing that on Friday. Should be cool. The other thing I've I've been 
thinking about a long time that I might get to as well is uh, doing the Raspberry Pi uh, tiny USB support. Um, I'm really looking for a bit of a break from this BLE stuff, but I'm going to have to keep poking the client side stuff as well. So like, I really don't want to stop doing BLE altogether until we've got people using it. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Kind of a mix of BLE and non BLE to keep me going. Sounds good. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up, I have notes from Warrior of Wire. who says, renamed Tasco to CircuitPython async and looking for help adding to community bundle and CircUp. Um, I believe once it goes into the bundle, CircUp finds it, um, and I can help you add that to the community bundle. Um, no problem there. Uh, and next up is Dan. Okay, scrolling up. Um, so last week, I after I finished um, fixing some I2S audio issues on RP2040, I was dissatisfied with the quality, and I thought there was something wrong with the code. But um, it was very erratic, the problems that we're having, I was having. And um, when I hooked up a Celia to look at the um, actual signals, the problem went away which meant that it was some kind of weird grounding problem or something. And I believe it was because I had two um, audio breakouts next to each other and they were wired in parallel and one was causing noise on the other. So the software problem I had went away completely, which was great. I was able to close the issue, though it took a while to figure that out. Um, I worked also on some, there were a bunch of remaining 7.0.0 issues. Um, there were very few left now, and we'll talk about them at the end, as Scott mentioned. I looked a little bit at supporting uh, HID boot protocol devices, which is keyboard and mouse when it's talking to the BIOS or something like that. It's not quite as straightforward to do as I thought, uh, because there's a lot of negotiation that has to happen. And I've been helping uh, Dylan with some simple examples of UR communication between boards. We're trying to come up with a, a catchy example. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Kenny. Uh, last week I finished up some parts, uh, printing some parts, and the final uh, thing that I wanted to implement on the etch sketch, which was making it have an accelerometer and shake and uh, prompt you to clear it. Uh, I made a PR to cookie cutter for some changes to support a third bundle, the CircuitPython org bundle. Uh, and I tested out the PR that was on CircuitPython org, uh, CircuitPython.org, the website, to add additional searching and filtering uh, in the downloads page is where that's at. Um, this week, I have a couple kind of stretch ideas in mind. I don't know if I'll get to all of them uh, for the etch sketch but I think it would be really neat to add a way to save your images so that you can retrieve them later, a way to uh, do maybe like spire graph images. So we'll go in a circle and you turn the knobs and it changes some of the radius and different things about the circle. And then uh, I also want to do one that's like traditional colors with gray in the background and try to make it match the real, um, how the real etch sketch looks color wise. Um, and then the other thing I want to try to get back into this week is tiled uh, game maps. Uh, I have a module that I started a little while back and I have uh, some specific ideas for puzzle games that I want to try to implement using that module. So I got to work some more on the module to get it um, actually ready to go. Uh, but that's what I got for this week. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Next up, I have notes from Jeff. He says, planning to work on 7.0 bugs if necessary. Otherwise, improving parallel display to not require sequential pins on the ESP32-S2 and will be out the first part of the week for personal reasons. And next up is Jerry. I don't know if you just wanted me to read that off or. Oh, I thought it helps. I, I, mean, well, <laughs> I, I have nothing to report. <laughs> no idea what I did this week. That's totally fair. <laughs> All right. And that, uh, it turns out, is status updates. Um, so with that, we will move on to In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. We have one topic, so I will turn it over to Scott to introduce that. 
Hello. So basically, I wanted to ask folks how they feel about 7.0. Um, there's a few issues open. I think the main one that is concerning is the one that Annotator was starting to look at um, on the ESP uh, S2 boot loop thing. There's also a, an open pull request from TAC for updating Tiny USB again, which would be good, but has also brought a bit of instability with us as well. Um, so how do how do folks think about um, doing that? Or also, um, yeah, like should we do another RC? Should we just do seven O and then expect to do a seven O one? So I would lean towards doing 7.0 and planning on doing a 7.01 simply because folks are more likely to use a stable release than they are um, even an RC and mm -hmm. getting it out there so folks can find those bugs for us to then fix in 7.01, 7.02, whatever, um, mm -hmm. I think is is crucial at this point because I think we're just, we're finding the last couple of things and we're just banging our heads against them and like, I think we need more input. Mm -hmm. that's my thought on it yeah i agree with you and i think another thing we should take into consideration is that like both dan and jeff and and kind of myself like we haven't really like bit off at something big again so we're kind of prepped to jump on any um yeah. issues that do come up if we did that um so, so yeah how do yeah Sorry, go ahead, Kat. No, I was going to say that would that would be my suggestion, is to uh, just go for it and um, <laughs> be be prepared. Go for it and be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> couple Any people, other thoughts? Couple people. What, what, other thoughts in, on what's in the? Um, I didn't see that there was a tiny USB PR. That was. There's something in there that. It's for passing compliance tests. Okay, yeah. I think since we have don't have specific issues. Yeah, and Microdev has the next code allocation fix as well. Right. That needs actually the next code allocation thing has to be yeah, it has to be there's some touch up to do on that because there are some builds that overflowed. So we have to I've uh, got what it was one of them, the PCA ten one hundred. Yes, but the other ones were small SAMD21 boards. I see. So uh, in order, I we, we had a little exchange about that, which you probably saw that I said, well, we could, they're not very common boards. And I thought we might get, um, we might get, we could get rid of the, one wire IO uh, bridging uh, thing on those boards or turn off rainbow IO. That's those are the simplest things to do. Just on those two or three or four boards. Yeah, for the Sandies. Yeah. So I have a big I, I hit the PCA uh, 10 100 and the P BLE file modification change I have as well. Yeah. And I added this knob to pr to not pre-compute the Q-string lengths and hashes in the flash. And I think I'm going to, I think we should turn that on for the PCA 10, uh, 100 because it's the NRF has, it has 128 K Ram. Um, so I think we would benefit from switching, switching that over. Well, just so it uses more Ram. Is that what you're saying? Right. Right. So it's a, it's this like, it's one of the tables in the const, the, the Q string stuff. And instead of computing all the hashes and stuff and then storing them in flash, what we can do is we can compute them on startup and then we just have to store them in RAM. Uh, but okay. it get, it gives us like 1800 more bytes <laughs> on okay. the PCA 10 100. So like, for this board that very few people use, yeah, and it has 128k RAM, like 
Well, is it would we use this this switch anywhere else if we um Well, I think the Sam D21s have too little flash. Yeah, they have too little flash to do that. Or so, too little RAM, sorry. Right, too little RAM to do that. So I was just wondering, let me just look and see what's turned on in the PCA 10100. It's not um, a lot. It's got a there's lot. There's a lot. Like we could turn off at exit or something. Uh Oh, is it on still? Yeah, it's on in PCA 10100. Mm. Um, Dev says it's off. What are you looking at, Dan, to see whether it's on or off? I'm looking at the support matrix. Oh, I'm looking at the MP config board make file. Has okay. It, it says it's on in the support matrix, so maybe that got... Okay. All right. All right, so... Um, all right, well, we could turn it, so we should accept your PR first, and... Then... Or, or do the same thing, or do the same thing, because my PR is going to have other stuff in it, but... Oh, I it's see. Just, it's just this flag, let me, I have it right here. It, it's just, I just added this. So yeah, I, I agree with Microdev that we should wait to get this PR in. Um... Wait to wait to get this um, traceback thing merged in, uh, but I think after that we could do seven zero. Um, we well, could take. We... Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can't merge. We need to that, and we can't. We had we that 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 PR is doesn't build completely, so we have to fix it before we merge it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe let's tentatively say let's do seven zero on like Sunday night or Monday next week. Like let's get in whatever we can in today and then and then we'll or can in this week and then we'll do 70 on on Monday. Um so not do another RC. I mean maybe what we want to do is push to get these last few things in this week and do an RC and then do 70 on Monday. Right, cuz so I think of these of the of these things of the of the remaining issues so i think we can merge 5333 today with a few changes yeah um, although micro is going to go to sleep soon hopefully okay because there i think it's super right, but i could i could probably make those changes yeah i could make the, all the builds work even without your flag yeah right uh, <laughs> and uh um and then there's there's and there's actually three issues here, and the pull request and the five three three two and five three 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 are the same. And right. then anecdata says the boot loop issue is is an issue. I, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's fixed by the USB thing. Probably not. Probably but, not. Yeah. Uh, there were also a few people were complaining that their file systems were getting erased randomly on ESP32 S2. I don't know what to make of that. Huh. And I think we could easily defer 5311 because it already was broken. So yeah. Defer that to 7xx. Right. All right. So that so then I only see 533 <clears throat> picking fi fixing 5332 and 5333. So we could we could do I could we could do an RC2 within the next day or two. So, and then wait and do right. the other one at the beginning of next week. Does that make sense? Or or even sooner? We could do it sooner. We could have it be for Wednesday. I just I just don't want I just don't want to do seven zero later in the week. Do you want it so Wednesday night is too soon? I mean, too too late in the week. I just want to make sure that we're around in case something drastic comes up. Yeah. Um, you thought you would be away one day next week. Do you know which day? Or... I don't know. I gotta check with my sister. I was just, I was just gonna okay. offer to go do hang out with my niece. Okay. Because <laughs> my my parents usually babysit for them, and they're out of town. So okay. Uh, I gotta text her. It looks like the. What do you think about the tiny USB thing? I don't see any. Uh. I don't know of any outstanding issues that would fix. So, 
so I don't know that we need to do that. I think it just it could have potentially cause a delay if it introduces new bugs. Right. I would say. Yeah. So it's it the build is broken because the PCA ten one hundred is full and the STM thirty two F four eleven is also full. I assume. Um, although that's Japanese, not French, which is interesting. Right. But I think that just getting rid of, how do you, like, if we turned off the one wire IO transitional thing in those small builds, then. That's probably enough. That's probably enough, right? Yeah, the JA, the Japanese build is 64 bytes different, so. Yeah. Um, Bruce so... says. Erase randomly occasionally. Right. Anecdata, does your do you see this problem at all when you're not using tiny UF2? The the boot loop problem? Is it really related solely to using tiny UF2? Oh, okay. Doesn't seem to matter. I could try to replicate that this week. I think it would be good. I think, I mean, I think, I, I don't know what to think about that. I was wondering whether the fact that you and Jeff introduced only one extra byte, does that make any difference as opposed to an aligned, like a 16 byte aligned gap or anything? I don't think it, I think you only need the one byte. Okay. Um, because it's all about when you're reading off the end of the ATB, just reading one, like one pair of bits that says that it's done, like that the the allocation is finished. Okay. So I think it, like it, it, I thought it was only a problem if it was perfectly aligned and read right into the FTB. Okay. Uh, But yeah, I could, I could try to reproduce it and see, and see. Uh, well, maybe it's worth looking at that because I think it'll come back to haunt us. I yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um. So Seth is saying stalls and crashes on the S two and the RP twenty forty boards. Hmm. -mm. Yeah, if you can reproduce it, please file an issue. It's really hard for us to fix something that we can't. I don't reproduce. think they're in the chat. I would type that out. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So, get in the few things. RC this week. Stable next week, yes? Yeah. There are some other ways, I, like I have an idea, I have some ideas about it. Um, maybe like th these, 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 these builds that don't fit, they're like by less than 100 bytes or something. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that like if I improve something like the arg validation code in a few on a few routines, I could get gain back that back. So I'll look at that really briefly, but the easiest thing is just to turn turn some stuff off. I think the the problem with doing those like just get it under the amount things is that it then it happens again, yeah. happens again and again. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe the thing to actually look at is to do the different um, live GCC or whatever. Yeah, I was thinking of that too. I was thinking of that. Yeah, um, so maybe I should look at that first because that that's going to be like a thousand bytes or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Why don't I look at that and see if it's simple? Yeah. So you want the file for me? Uh, yeah. Or or a pointer to the Arch package or something. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. Yeah. I don't even know where to look. In the Arch I think it's pre. Yeah. I think I think it is pre-built, so I can find it for you. And then we can just put that in the in the in S three along with the. Yeah, it does look like we do get a few more, a um, few hundred bytes more with 11 as well. Mm, right. Well, I think that's 
that could even be seven one could be well i'd like to wait until right i mean i'd like to wait until yeah you can get it more your arm download is because that's that that's much easier for everybody so right and they yeah, get that's yeah yeah so i expect that to be around the end of the year right. december or january yeah yeah um for seven one i will that like that's kind of when i'll do the idf update i think as well okay so that we can start doing s3 stuff and do you think that it makes sense so would we expect we would backport anything like once we release 700 and branch it then and branch 7x or 71x or something uh 70x um i don't necessarily think we'd actually branch I think the you know the reason to branch is to be able to do something that we know will destabilize it. Well, I'm I'm thinking of of all the eight o the eight at x changes that involve making incompatible changes. Whether right. Defer those. So you're saying defer those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we just defer those. Okay. Um, like I think we'll come to the point where we do want to do something for eight and or we want to. Like at that point we, that we want to call main eight, then we can. But I wouldn't do that immediately. I think we'll ta we'll tag seven zero, and if we end up pulling something in that for seven one that's more destabilizing, we can go back and do the branch off the tag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maintaining two branches is not very fun. No. So I would I would say let's wait to let's wait to branch off seven until we. We want to be able to do something more drastic in in uh, okay. in Maine. Okay. Okay. So I think the conclusion is is we'll try to fix as many bugs this week as we can, along with a new RC once the ones we know about already are done, and then regardless or or probably regardless of what we find this week, we'll do we'll plan on doing seven zero on Monday next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Let's do some showstopper. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and the Beely workflow stuff I'm not expecting to get in 7.0. So I'm expecting it to change a little bit internally, and that's fine because it's yeah. got its own version number. Right. That sounds good. Yeah. So it's not not critical for me to get this other Beely stuff uh, that I'm working on in. All right. And I'll look at the um, at the at the at the libgcc thing yeah um, so that'll, that'll solve a lot of problems yeah yeah i'll take a i'll, I'll figure out where that is okay right here all right okay sounds good okay excellent um with that uh i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for September 13th, 2021. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from Adafruit at adafruit.com. Uh, this video uh, will be the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com/adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on Monday, as usual, as far as I know, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about changes to the meeting uh, and about the meeting in general, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>